Hey friends, welcome to a day in the life vlog. This is a vlog of one of the highlights of my trip when I went to Japan. So in my free time while I was in Japan, I got a chance to meet with Ruben Holmes. Okay, Ruben and I connected a few years ago during the COVID pandemic. And I'm a big fan of his Instagram page, which you can check out at Ruben underscore PhD underscore Japan, where he goes through some of the highlights from his experience living in Japan as a foreigner and also studying nuclear fusion and doing research of nuclear fusion materials. So Ruben was kind enough to meet up with me at the university and take me through a bit of a tour when it comes to the university itself. So we got a chance to check out the campus, feel the really the energy there. You see all these beautiful ginkgo leaves, especially in the fall time. It's a really, really incredible experience. Uh, we also got a chance to learn about Ruben and his research experience here at the university and also got a chance to meet his colleagues as well. And lastly, one of the highlights was getting a chance to see one of the most majestic gardens at the university campus. This, right so this was definitely a highlight of the trip where we got a chance to check out this beautiful garden right with koi fish and just mesmerizing streams and the way it's maintained it's, it's incredible so and lastly to top it all off we got a chance to grab a bite to eat at the university where you got matcha green tea on tap and you have all these delicious different meals as you know japan is known for its food so it was honestly a blast getting a chance to meet ruben and tour the university with him and let's jump into this video. So the day starts off with me taking a train to the University of Tokyo. I was located in a place called Shinjuku, okay, not too far from the university. So I took the train over there. And as you know, the trains are phenomenal, just an incredible experience as to the efficiency of just getting from one place to another. And I managed to get there a bit early. So what I did was grab a quick bite at, you know, at a local restaurant right next to the university. So this restaurant, as you can tell, I'm grabbing and eating different meals here, but this is a bit of a salmon, uh, salmon bowl or tuna bowl i forgot which one it was a salad and a few other things then getting a chance to finally say hi to ruben right so you make these online virtual friends and it's rare to actually get a chance to see them in person right so it's phenomenal getting a chance to meet him really appreciate him coming all the way to meet up at this location all right so next we walk through the university itself all right and at the university we get a chance to immerse ourselves in the beautiful stunning fall colors that the university has to offer right so you'll notice that these beautiful trees are ginkgo trees, which are the University of Tokyo's logo. What's interesting about ginkgo trees is that the ginkgo leaf is the symbol of the school of the Japanese tea ceremony. So it has deep roots in Japanese culture and the tree is the official tree of the Japanese capital of Tokyo as well. So since 1948, the badge of University of Tokyo has been those two ginkgo leaves, which became officially the university logo in the year 2004 with a whole new redesign. So you know, you also see other universities in, in Japan, like Osaka University, which also have a ginkgo leaf, which has a bit of a different design. So Ruben and I, we walked around campus, checking out some of the buildings. And what you'll notice is that these buildings, some of them seem a little aged, not too, too old. Gave me kind of a University of Toronto type of vibe, type of energy. Then one of the highlights here was actually checking out this huge ginkgo tree. I, I wonder how old this ginkgo tree is. So for those that don't know, ginkgo trees are known for their medicinal properties and really admired here by the culture of Japan. But what's also really interesting is that they release these nuts that fall on the, the ground and are quite horrible to smell. They kind of smell like a bit of vomit. That's what it smelled like to me, but that's only if you crush them. So, but you'll notice that on, on campus, there aren't many of these nuts anywhere. And this is great because, you know, you're not really having that scent anywhere. However, this is a close up look at the leaf itself. Okay, so it's definitely beautiful, beautiful leaf. All right, so next Ruben takes me into the Department of Nuclear science and technology where we get a chance to uh, chat a little bit more about Ruben's research and what he's doing. So here's a little bit about what Ruben does day to day and a bit more about his research. The fusion reactors that have this hot plasma which is very very hot right like uh, hot on the surface of the sun right? Yeah in some so, instances. Like so center of the sun is like 15 million degrees C. Fusion reactors go around 10 times hotter than that. Uh, 150, 200 million degrees. Actually, uh, cl close to where I live in Naka, in Ibaraki Prefecture, uh, maybe 25 years ago, they set the world record for the highest temperature ever recorded on the Earth in their fusion reactor. Oh, wow. 520 million degrees C, which wow. is crazy. Wow, that's crazy. insane. I wish, I wish we had that interview there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
next time. All right, so next we are meeting his colleague who's also here. So she was a bit camera shy, but we got her a little bit out of her comfort zone to chat a little bit about zirconium and her research as well. So here's what she has to say about her experience in Japan and also her research. Uh, so I've been here for uh, four year and a half. Um, and uh, like all of those years I've been here in University of Tokyo. Uh, our university is pretty nice. It has um, very nice um, facilities. Um, also, uh, it's very inclusive. We have many foreigners in here. Um, and also, as a foreigner, you can experience Japanese culture because we are provided with many cultural uh, classes and also language classes. So yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. And also, this campus is very beautiful, especially during winter, uh, not winter, but late autumn. Uh, because you can see the yellow trees, the kinko. Mm, okay, okay, so, yeah. very nice. That's awesome. And how about the cultural, uh, like the language, right? So um, how long does it take usually for a researcher here to pick up the language and or even maybe be exposed to it? Well, Japanese language is, um, well, a bit hard for foreigners because it has completely different structure. Um, and um, well, for how long, it depends on the person. And uh, but usually for master program or PhD program, uh, you don't need to speak Japanese. Uh, most of the programs are actually in, uh, done in English, and most of the classes in our department also done in English. Okay, that's awesome. How about you, uh, Ruben? What, what are your thoughts on uh, learning mm. Japanese and? Uh, uh. Yeah. Uh, like like Nelly said, the, for the research side of things, it's not it's not really necessary. But for daily life, it's it's really important if you like want to thrive here. You can survive here, no problem, uh, learning English. But if you really want to thrive, you need to you need to learn a language, mix with local people. Uh, the nice thing is is the university provides uh, free language classes for all students, all staff, and even their families, I believe. So oh, wow. it's okay. yeah, it's they they really encourage you as a researcher to embed yourself into the 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 community. Um, All right. So next, Ruben let me in on a bit of a special secret here on campus, and this is a campus gem that is pretty much a little bit of a beautiful, nice park. Okay, that they have. It's almost like a conservation type of park with a beautiful pond with flowing stream at the back. And once you get right close into the pond itself, you see these massive koi fish. And koi, as you know, is definitely one of the highlights here in Japan. If you're ever visiting, you get a chance to see those. It's incredible. And we got a chance to really immerse ourselves into the nature, check out the park. And it's honestly, if I was to go to university here, this would be a really nice break to catch after a whole lot of research and studying and next is another great highlight and here's some of the buildings that surround the university so these buildings give you a bit of a flavor as to what campus life is like for students here all right so next we go to the campus cafe and right away you notice the meals here are fresh they're delicious and they actually have some incredible halal options and vegetarian options as well which are quite difficult to find anywhere outside of campus is here in Japan. So I got myself a halal meat wrap, almost like a shawarma, but it's of course a bit of a Japanese style. And I think Ruben got some sort of a salmon bowl. And you can have free green tea and water, right? And no. Green tea on top. Oh yeah, green tea on top. I wonder how the machines do it, right? <laughs> right. There's somebody behind the machine making yeah. <laughs> making every cup. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, what do you what do you what are your thoughts on the overall quality of the food here in terms of the cafeteria and the university? I mean I think everywhere in, in Japan that I've been, the food quality is amazing and the, the price is reasonable. Is I, I, I don't think I've ever had bad quality food here. So Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, compared to Canada, like very good quality and like super, super cheap food. Uh, so I'm a big fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, and even, even here at the cafeteria, everything looked super nice and healthy, right? Like I didn't see pizzas and like, right. you know, traditional cafeteria food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is a lot of people tend to just eat out every day because it's so accessible, it's so convenient, it's cheap, good quality. So there's no, like, why would you cook at home if you have, like, easy access to this good food at a reasonable price? It's, yeah. So I feel a bit silly cooking here sometimes when all my friends are eating out. So. 
Absolutely. So great experience and we'll dig in and let you know how it is. However, here is the menu, right? That you can see of the different things that they are offering. Okay. So you're seeing hamburger with steak. So hamburger with, um, you know, with hamburgers are really popularly eaten here without the bun. Okay. So I think it's good for less carbs. And then you also see other really cool options. So lots of eggs, you see that salmon bowl, you know, so many options here. I could just imagine how incredible it would be to be a student here at the university. And what you'll see here with the food is that it's all reasonably priced, right? Meals here are super cheap. So remember 100 yen is pretty much a dollar. So if you're in the United States, it's even cheaper. So it's like 70 cents per 100 yen. So most of the meals here are like three or four or five dollars, right? Which is very reasonable. But yeah, there you have it. It was a great experience, a really fun day where we got a chance to tour the university and finally get the chance to meet Ruben who makes some incredible content on living in Japan and sharing his experiences at being a researcher here at the university. So there you have it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care. Bye.